I want to introduce you once again to our adventures of the alchemical twins, Tara of the Oracles. The alchemical twins, which are all of us, boy and girl, old man, old woman, face the fates. And even the gods obey the fates. During these interesting times of global warming, financial meltdown and global violence, so many of us wonder, should we be on our knees in penitence for having trashed our lovely earth, or standing up bravely for our values, or simply enter the beautiful many-colored land of our visions? With an exciting climax in 2012, to pay honor to this moment, I offer three of my own prophet prophetic visions. The first I choose was in the new year of 1947. At that time, I was 29, I'm 92 when speaking, I knew nothing of the religion of the goddess. As a Protestant and an Irish one, I've been brought up to avoid Catholic Mariolatry, Catholic, call it, um, Blessed Virgin, we called it Mariolatry. So what happened came as a revelation. In vision at night, I found an angelic guide drawing me to a Catholic church. Before me on a pedestal was a statue of the Virgin Mary, in the form I had been told was bad art a cheap Brussels mass-made figure, which was all that poor people could afford, in blue robe and white guy. My guide told me that artificial flowers could be added if I chose. I felt the appropriate cultural disapproval. Then I saw a mighty white cone of white light descending from the heavens with its point descending upon the head of the figure. I heard the three-beat music of Sibelius's Danse Macabre. The guide said, This is the mightiest power in the universe. It is the Sophia truth. To my amazement, the luminous cone descended through the figure which became alive. She was a living being, a woman with very long chestnut-colored hair in a beautiful blue robe over a white gown. But what startled me was that she was wearing a black mask over her eyes. As I watched, she descended from her pedestal and glided out of the church. I was shown her crossing from Ireland to England and from thence into the world. I asked, What does this mean? The reply came, Good for the virtuous, bad for the wicked. Why do you show this nemesis as a very young girl? because she represents the abused principle. She is totally weak, so she is completely powerful. I relate this as inspiration from the stars. The second prophecy I choose came later on Sunday the 20th of July, 1985. I feel it belongs to the sun. I found myself in a large hall facing a group of people headed by a tall, dark woman. She drew a black veil over the lower part of her face like a yashmak. I was required to answer the three riddles of the Sphinx. The first riddle concerned the rising of the sun. I drew my hands down to the ground and raised them. My reply was, goodness comes from the earth. The second riddle was, what is the meaning of the sun at noon? I lifted my arms 
and brought them downward. We need to lift ourselves up and receive life from the divine source. The last riddle was, what does the setting of the sun signify? Is this fortunate or misfortunate? This relates to the decline of the old world and the hope of the great awakening of the new aeon. As with all divine happenings, there are two sides. It will bring good fortune to those worthy of it, misfortune to those who oppose deity. I note that a change in the rising and setting of the sun may relate to a possible shift in the Earth's axis, or the Earth itself. I found very meaningful a recent prophecy that I connect with our Earth. At night on the 28th of July 2005, I found myself in our Temple of Isis between the Leo Shrine and the old dungeon, now Cave of the Mothers. There appeared above me a shelf and on it were three small voodoo figures that I had bought in New Orleans. Suddenly, towering above me, on my right, appeared a black-robed woman, so high I could not see her face. I found myself saying, Shall I go on my knees? I received a reply in a woman's strong, deep voice. I am not an executioner. I was aware I was holding a large decorated book by Dean Fortune, author of Sea Priestess and Moon Magic of Golden Dawn of Ireland. So I thought this dark goddess was the author figure, our Irish Morrigan. A week or so later, when the Hurricane Katrina devastated New Orleans, I decided the goddess was the African sea deity, Yamaya. Was I offering to go on my knees to save the city? The words, I'm not an executioner, meant that she was not punishing people. Retribution from the inhuman cruelties of the slave trade had inevitable retribution to the workings of the fates. Cruelty in one life leads to payment deferred to another lifetime, and the soul is ready to repent. Pondering on the tragic history of Ireland, I remember the words of an Irish woman when I asked her, was she upset by the loss of the riches brought by the Celtic tiger recently? Not a bit, she replied cheerfully. We Irish are used to being poor. We remember the famine.